Hello everyone and welcome to another War Thunder video. Today I wanted to talk about energy fighters or boom and zoom fighters as popularized by the War Thunder community. I see a lot of people asking questions about them in the in-game chat and on the forums. Uh, just what exactly a energy fighter is and how to use one to its full potential. So first and foremost, it's important to make the distinction that energy fighting is not relegated to a specific type of aircraft, but rather it's a combat tactic that can be used by any type of fighter. Now with that being said, there are certain aircraft that perform this tactic better than others, particularly aircraft with better climbing and diving characteristics. Now here I'm using the BF-109 because it's one of the best fighters for utilizing this tactic. Okay, so you're probably still wondering what the tactic is itself. Well, it's all about physics and energy management managing potential and kinetic energy to give yourself an advantage in a fight. Every fighter pilot knows, or should know at least, that the plane with more altitude and more speed has the advantage. You can see in that last clip that I was able to take my potential energy or altitude and convert it to kinetic energy or speed with a dive. This allowed me to close on and engage my target. Now I'm using that kinetic energy and converting it back into potential energy by climbing out of the attack. This is important because I've now set myself up to engage another aircraft. So essentially, energy fighting allows you to dictate the terms of an engagement. It's really important to not get lured into a dogfight. If you don't kill an enemy on your first pass, climb out, set yourself up for another run. So let's talk about pursuit curves. They're essentially the angle of attack that you'll take when engaging your enemy. There are two types that apply to War Thunder. The first type, which you'll see here, is called a lag pursuit. A lag pursuit is when you come out of your dive on your enemy's tail, or 6 o'clock. The advantage of a lag pursuit is that it gives you more time on target as well as an easier target to shoot at. The disadvantage is that the longer you stay on an enemy's tail, the more speed you lose and the more vulnerable you are to an enemy attack. The second type of pursuit curve is called a lead pursuit. A lead pursuit is when an enemy plane will cross in front of your crosshair while you're still in your dive. The advantage of a lead pursuit is that it allows you to maintain as much speed as possible, making you less vulnerable to enemy fire. The disadvantages of a lead pursuit are that you have much less time to shoot at your target as well as a more difficult target to shoot at. It's really important to maintain your discipline. As I said before, if you don't kill an enemy on your first pass, climb out, gain your altitude, and set yourself up for another attack. Don't get lured into a dogfight, particularly with an airplane that is more maneuverable than you are. Getting into a turning fight or staying on an enemy's tail for too long bleeds off valuable speed and prevents you from making an escape should enemies come to the rescue of your target. As with any game, good situational awareness is key. It's extremely important to know the situation around you before you enter your attack. It's also very important to know when to fight and when to run. You always want to enter an engagement on your terms whenever possible. This guy got a bit of a jump on me, but I know my plane's faster than his. So instead of getting in a dogfight, I just enter a dive and hit the deck. Now it's important when running away from an enemy like this, that you run back towards friendly players, whether it be other aircraft or ground units. Friendly AA and anti-aircraft cannons will make it much more difficult for him to get a beat on you. Also, flying low and hugging the terrain makes it much more difficult for him to aim at you as well. A more seasoned pilot will generally break off his pursuit knowing that he's lost his advantage. If the pilot doesn't break his pursuit, just continue to lure him back towards friendly players. He'll make a relatively easy target. So now you may be wondering how to counter an energy fighter. The best thing to do, since you can't run away, is actually turn into their attack. Their high speed makes them much less maneuverable, and oftentimes they'll overshoot you. Then try and lure him into a dogfight. Luring him into a dogfight will give time for friendly players to come and assist. If they're a disciplined pilot, they'll climb away and try and make another diving pass. If this happens, continue to turn into their attack, and buy yourself time until help can arrive. So when should you use energy fighting tactics? Ultimately, you should start any engagement with an altitude and speed advantage. Where you maintain the energy fighting tactic is when your plane is faster yet less maneuverable than your opponent. For example, a plane like the Zero would maintain use of this tactic when engaging something like a biplane. A Spitfire would maintain this tactic when engaging a Zero which is more maneuverable. A BF-109 would maintain this tactic when engaging the Spitfire. And something like a Corsair would maintain this tactic when engaging something like a 109. So when would you not use this tactic? Well, you'd break off using this tactic when engaging a plane that is faster, dives, and climbs better than yours. Instead, after making your initial dive attack, you want to try and lure that plane into a turning fight. For example, that same biplane should dive on the Zero and then try and lure him into a dogfight. The same thing with the Zero versus Spitfire, a Spitfire versus something like a 109, and a 109 versus something like a Corsair. Ultimately, you need to understand the characteristics of the planes that you are flying and the planes that you are engaging. 
Planes with higher speed and less maneuverability will ultimately use this tactic more than planes that are more maneuverable. Discipline is probably the most important thing when using energy fighting tactics. Don't let yourself get lured into dogfights with more maneuverable aircraft. Maintain your speed and your altitude advantages. Remember, altitude and speed are a fighter pilot's best friends. If you don't have one, you must have the other. If you're low, you must be fast. If you're slow, you must be high. But ultimately, having both is the best. Maintain good situational awareness. Know where your friendlies are, know where enemies are, and always have an escape plan before you make your attack. These tactics and discipline are all the more important as you enter historical and full real battles. I see a lot of people in forums and in in-game chat saying that boom and zoom fighters or energy fighters are useless in arcade mode, and that's just not true. You just need to maintain your discipline. I think that players using more energy suited fighters get frustrated when they're not constantly shooting down or shooting at enemy planes and get lured into turning fights and ultimately get shot down. Initially you won't get as many kills right off the bat as dogfighters, but over the course of a round your score will add up. And when used effectively, these energy fighting tactics make you a lot less likely to be shot down. If you find yourself getting shot down a lot in a particular aircraft, try changing up your tactics. Use some energy fighting. Don't charge headlong into the fray, but rather gain some altitude and ambush your targets. So if you follow these tips and tactics that I've kind of outlined in this video, I promise that you'll see an increase in your score with these more energy suited fighters. I find that when I follow these tactics and maintain my discipline and don't break for them, I get shot down much much less and get a higher KD ratio. Ultimately I think getting 6 or 7 kills and 0 deaths like I did in this game is much better than getting 8 or 9, maybe 10 at the cost of 3, 4, 5 aircraft. Well that about does it for the basics on energy fighting, I hope that helps to clear it up for some people. If you enjoy the video, as always, don't forget to leave a like and a comment below, subscribe for more action from my channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.